कुमार सामी नायक है बोम वाली बुलेटो का रेडियो फिजी टू में पुराना गाना लगे हमें बहुत अच्छा लगे रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन इन द न्यूज टुनाइट एम पी जपियर इन कोर्ट ओवर चार्जेस मोर ड्रामा इन किशोर कुमार केस एंड वी नीड टू हील ओशन सेस प्राइम मिनिस्टर From the studios of FBC Suva, Edwin Nan. Ulavinaka Fiji. Six Sodelpa MPs have been granted bail by the Suva Magistrates Court after being charged with one count of giving false information to a public servant and one count of obtaining financial advantage. And the Elitia Ngyo Nimbaravi, Simeone Rasova, Salote Randronro, Pedeli Vosanimbola, Niko Nawaikula and Ratu Suliano Matanitombua appeared before the Chief Magistrate this afternoon. It's just another chink in the Sodelpa armor after weeks of internal bickering. The MPs are alleged to have breached the Parliamentary Remuneration Act 2014. All six must surrender travel documents and report to the nearest police station every last Friday of the month. A bail bond of $700 has also been set for each accused, along with stop departure orders. Meanwhile, former Sodelpa leader Sitiveni Rambuka was also in the court to throw support to the six Sodelpa MPs. I just uh, come to uh, show them uh, moral support. They were there when I was uh, facing charges, and uh, it's always uh, uh, encouraging for them to see their friends outside the court taking a, a close interest on in the proceedings. So I'm here really to show support, as you can see also Leader of Opposition is here, to show his support. Um, and so really being here to even help out uh, with uh, uh, our members who've had to produce their sureties as well as uh, their IDs and all of those other details. Um, for, all, for most of them, it's the first time they've come to court. Randonro was an Imbola, Nawaikula and Ratu Suliano only brought one surety and have been told to produce a second one at the next court date. Rofili Petisawau offered to be the second surety for Ratu Suliano. However, Faikek strongly objected to this, saying no MP should be a surety. Court requirements on residential addresses will be effective after next week's parliamentary sitting as some MPs live outside Suba and need to attend sessions. The Chief Magistrate Usaiya Ratuvili also informed that he had worked with Salote Ronrondo's husband and neither FICAC nor the defense has any objection. The matter has been adjourned to 25th January. Apiniswangirdobu, FBC News. And earlier in the day, government member of parliament, Vijendra Prakash, was released on bail by the Suva Magistrates Court. Prakash is charged with one count of giving false information to a public servant and one count of obtaining financial advantage. It's alleged that he obtained $33,670 in allowances from the acting Secretary General to Parliament. The Fiji Independent Commission Against Corruption alleges Prakash lied to the Parliament Secretariat about his residential address to obtain the travel and accommodation allowances. The court heard that Prakash has allegedly listed his address as Wainrandra in Naita Siri, whereas he actually lives in Omkar Road, Narere. Prakash informed the court that he has a farm in Vunindawa and lives at both locations. The government MP has been bailed for a sum of $5,000, ordered not to re-offend and to surrender his travel documents to court. A stop departure order has also been issued against the MP. The matter will be called again on January 25th. Former computer science teacher and Facebook commentator Kishore Kumar has been ordered to deactivate his Facebook page and other social media accounts and not publish anything until his case concludes. This afternoon, Kumar was released on $700 bail with two sureties for the same sum. Kumar also creating a scene outside court today, claiming he was subject to assault. Pranita Prakash reports. Kishore Kumar appeared in court today with a bandage under his right eye, alleging that he was assaulted while in remand. Yeah, let me just talk to you. I was assaulted in uh, 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 the uh, remand center. A warden and an inmate was involved. While granting bail, the Suva magistrate told Kumar that he can lodge a report with the police of the alleged assault. However, Kumar said he has already done that. Kumar was ordered not to create any new accounts or post anything on social media during the duration of his case. He has been ordered to report to Valilebu police station every Saturday. Kumar faces six counts of indecently annoying a person and one count of criminal intimidation. 
It is alleged that between July and October, he insulted the modesty of National Federation Party MP Leonora Ngerengere Tambua by posting live videos on his public Facebook page saying that Ngerengere Tambua is a porn star in Fiji. It is also alleged that on 3rd August, he posted a live video saying that Ngerengere Tambua is a porn star in Parliament. He also allegedly posted another video saying the NFP MP is a porn lover and that's why she made a porn video. The matter has been adjourned to 11th of January. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. As the world begins to rebuild from COVID-19, Fijians must not turn a blind eye to climate issues and focus more on healing humanity and our oceans. Prime Minister Voreng Mbani Marama made the comment while launching the Ocean's New Action Plan agenda with 13 other countries in Suva this morning. This new action plan is aimed at helping take the fight of climate change to the highest level. Josiah Nanunga has more. The Prime Minister says the Ocean Transformation document aims to strengthen the commitment of a 100% sustainable management of oceans for future generations who are at risk of being victims of climate change and depletion. But in, in, in many ways, and as hard as uh, it is to see this now, the global uh, oceanic uh, emergency we face is even worse than COVID-19. Because while pandemic of this scale or larger have come and gone, usually about once every century, climate change and the degradation of the ocean is causing damage that cannot be undone. He adds Fiji is starting to experience serious cases where communities are lost to the seas and coral reefs facing mass extinction. My friends in Fiji, we see firsthand every day how ocean ecosystems are buckling under the stain of a warming world pollution, overfishing, and other reckless abuse from humankind. Climate Change Minister Ayaz Sayed Kayyum says investing in the protection of our ocean is critical. The World Bank reports that Pacific Island countries stand to gain U.S. $250 million per year, provided the right legislative and governance measures are in place to ensure sustainable management. As a large ocean state, that makes Fiji a land of big opportunity. Sayyad Kayyum says Fiji's ocean policy will serve as a compass towards sustaining our ocean at the local and international level. Cho Sayyanunga, FBC News. Up ahead, government to break barriers for the disabled and dog attacks linked to bad owners. By today, I Radio Fiji both Radio Fiji Rosudda. Radio Fiji Two, Deshki Dharka. Welcome back. The government will continue to keep breaking barriers affecting persons with disabilities. While officiating at the International Day of Persons with Disabilities, Minister for Women Merasini Vuniwanga said the day is about raising awareness on issues affecting the disabled. Senya Nimboila reports. The government's commitment to helping those disabled were clearly portrayed in the increasing budget allocation given every year to the sector. From 4.2 million in 2016 to 21.8 million in the current year across our government. Budget lines like scholarships, sports grants, economic empowerment, bus fare subsidies, disability allowances, accessibility to homes, mobility aid, capital investment in disability centers, etc. tell us that we are moving in the right direction for an inclusive and accessible future. UN resident coordinator Sanaka Samarasina says Fiji now is being inclusive when persons with disabilities were relatively unnoticed in previous years. When I started working in the Pacific back in, in 2000, Fiji in particular, disability didn't even come into the conversation I had with, as a human rights advisor for the Asia Pacific with any of the decision makers and policy. In fact, I don't recollect that there was any any type of disability in the room. Also part of the celebration was the launch of the National Directory and Information on Disability Services, as well as the launch of the National Council for Persons with Disabilities website and Dignity Kits. Sainia Nimboila, 
FBC News. The Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals says attacks by dogs on humans stem from the treatment the animals receive from their owners. In recent times, there have been a spate of dog attacks, and most of the animals involved have proper owners. The SPCA says most dog owners don't know how to treat their dogs. Venina Rakotonga reports the SPCA is calling for more awareness by people to learn how to treat their pets to help prevent dog attacks. SPCA claims the behavior of animals is determined by how they are treated, which in turn leads to violent attacks by these animals. Mostly you will notice the dog attacks is mostly own dogs, not uh, like stray dogs. People mostly end up blaming the stray dogs for attacks, but most of the time it's not the stray dogs. Stray dogs are actually scared of people and they'll run when they see people. Dr. Olva says owning a dog comes with responsibilities. Some of it has to do with how the dogs are raised and how the dogs are treated. Some of it has to do with our perceptions about dogs. Some of it has to do with we allow dogs to live on the street. They shouldn't be because they're very social animals. They're like people. Dr. Olva says animals are easily triggered. People teasing dogs sets that up. So one person, might be a child, might be a teenager, throws a stick or a stone at a dog and then walks away. And the dog's got itself all worked up. The next person unfortunately walks by and the gate happens to be a little open. All that dog remembers is that's a human, not necessarily that that's the same one. Bam, there goes a bite. The shelter is hoping to create more awareness and educational programs on treatment of animals. Venina Rakautonga, FBC News. The Ba Town Council has so far collected about 90 kilograms of rubbish from the Elevuka Creek. This follows the installation of the Revolution Litter Boom. The council launched the boom project six weeks ago together with local startup company Modus Fiji. Their aim is to reduce the amount of litter entering major waterways and the Mba River. Details with Philippe Naikaso. Litter boom is a device consisting of a partly submerged floating boom positioned in a waterway that is designed to trap highly buoyant and visible pollutants such as plastic bottles and it has already started paying dividends for bar. It contains mostly plastic bottles, takeaway containers, uh, plastics, uh, nappies uh, and uh, other household materials that I mean just people are throwing in the river and it shows that uh, we are not actually caring for our environment. The rubbish that is being collected by the revolution boom is from the past six days an overwhelming indication of the amount of waste present in our environment. We expect like one ton of rubbish to be collected by the end of the year. So just imagine if all the councils come up with this idea of having the boom installed. So in 2018, Modus Fiji went on a business trip to China um, and we were walking along the waterfront and we saw that in a city that has a population of millions and millions, their rivers were really pristine and really clean. Despite this being the only litter boom brought in by Modus Fiji, the company is willing to work with other municipalities. So the uh, pilot program that we ran in Bar was only a few meters wide, but you can take it to rivers that are a lot, lot bigger. The council will also be moving the boom to other areas in Bar in order to gauge the sort of rubbish found in streams. Philip and I, Caso, FBC News. 2020 is going to be a year to remember, a year characterized by heat waves, droughts, wildfires and raging hurricanes is on track to be the second hottest year on record. Just how hot it will be? More in this report. 2020 is on track to be the second hottest year on record behind 2016. Five data sets currently place 2020, a year characterized by heat waves, droughts, wildfires and raging hurricanes as the second warmest since records began in 1850, according to the World Meteorological Organization, a UN agency in a report on Wednesday. UN Secretary General Antonio Gutierrez said in a speech to Columbia University Wednesday that human-caused greenhouse gas emissions are to blame and policies have yet to rise to the challenge. To put it simply, the state of the planet is broken. Dear friends, humanity is waging war on nature. This is suicidal. Nature always strikes back, and it is already doing so with growing force and fury. This is an epic policy test.
But ultimately, this is a moral test. The U.S. report said extreme heat stoked wildfires this year across Australia, Siberia, and the United States, sending smoke plumes around the globe. Less visible was a surge in marine heat to record levels, with more than 80% of the global ocean experiencing a heat wave. FBC ran a story last week about Fazilat Shah Legal, whereby we mentioned that three months back, lawyer Harun Ali Shah was found guilty in relation to money held in a trust account on behalf of a client that was incorrect. The incident was in 2012. FBC News apologizes for this and any inconvenience it may have caused. And now we join Apunisa for the latest in business. Thanks, Edwin. Coming up, FSC CEO to live. And in growing Fiji, find demand on the app. Stay with us. Pula, nandang gua prosa nangar se, gua erkeraki. The televio nubarong na Radio Fiji One, nandom iviti. Radio Fiji One, nandom iviti. Fiji Sugar Corporation Chief Executive Graham Clark will be ending his service with FSC at the end of his current term in February. FSC Board Chair Vishnu Mohan in a statement says Clark was employed for three years which expired in February this year. However, after consultation with the Ministry for Sugar, Clark's contract was extended based on satisfactory performance for one more year. Mohan says Clark has given notice of uh, his intention to end his service with FSC. Mohan says Clark's decision is purely personal and is supported by the FSC board. The FSC board will meet on Friday following which an announcement will be made regarding the progress on the recruitment of a new CEO. The position of the CEO has been advertised. U.S. President-elect Joe Biden won't immediately reverse Donald Trump's China tariffs and trade deal. He has told the New York Times in an interview. Instead, he'll focus on a stimulus package and keeping his China options open. Sinifa from HFC Bank joined us now with the latest from the trading world. December typically brings cheer for the New Zealand and Aussie dollars, but the Aussie isn't getting any lift from the upbeat Aussie data that was released this morning. Australia's exports rose 5.4% month-on-month in October, following September's 6% rise. Meanwhile, domestic demand, as represented by imports, increased just 0.6% following September's 6.5% contraction. The U.S. dollar licked its wounds near a two-and-a-half-year low against a basket of major currencies today. Investors wagered that more economic stimulus from Washington and the expected start of COVID-19 vaccinations will support riskier assets. Meanwhile, Britain approved a COVID-19 vaccine developed by Pfizer and BioNTech and said it would start vaccinating those most at risk early next week. The vaccine optimism helped to boost the euro despite widespread expectation the European Central Bank will enhance its quantitative easing next week. That's all for now from HFC Bank, Vinaka. Here are the local exchange rates as set early this morning. The Fiji dollar was pegged higher against the Chinese yuan, the US greenback, the Aussie dollar, the PNG kina, and the Japanese yen. It lost some ground against the strong Kiwi dollar and the euro. Commodity prices were on the rise. Oil prices jumped over a dollar to just about $45 a barrel. Gold rose to $1,829 per ounce, and silver closed up a few cents at 23.88 per ounce. The Fiji Pine Trust has noted an increase in demand for pine timber following tropical cyclone Harold earlier this year. Manager Lasarusa Turanga says this is due to the increasing demand for lumber to assist in the rehabilitation work in places that felt the impact of the disaster. He adds that this has also strengthened their operations by responding to the government rehabilitation program in boosting wood production in maritime islands. And uh, right now we have uh, assisted the uh, government on Kandavu and uh, we have assisted, assisted in particular our resource owners on uh, Ono, uh, on Ono Island in Kandavu uh, who are now venturing 
into uh, business uh, ventured approaches uh, for the improvement of livelihood and uh, economic empowerment on the island. That's all from business tonight. Jamie joins us now with the latest from sports. Naka and good evening in sports tonight. Another major challenge for flying Fijians. And Fiji fact champions aware of threat. Details after the break. Kumar Sami Naika, Bongo Alugu Latoka. Radio Fiji 2 me. The Flying Fijians may be COVID-19 free, but there's another obstacle they have to overcome before playing their first Autumn Nations Cup match on Sunday. Fiji is scheduled to play Georgia. However, that has to be confirmed tonight. Akula Dama has more. These players will know tonight whether they will be cleared to travel to Scotland to face Georgia. The travel plans is for the team to travel on Facebook, uh, France time, eh? which is tomorrow, our time. And uh, yeah, we're just waiting for the approvals and hopefully everything uh, is positive. Uh, the boys can go there and uh, express themselves in their match against uh, Georgia. The flying Fijians are back to full training after two weeks in isolation. Former national captain Simon Rewa Louis says there's been some good feedback from the players regarding the coaching staff. They've, the players have welcomed them uh, really well. They have uh, really good feedback on what they're, what they're doing. Uh, one of the main plans for us was uh, as a Fiji, as a rugby nation, is to get back to our DNA, what, what, is, what we're good at, what, what are our main skills and emphasising them while growing the, all the basics as well. So they, that, uh, our coaching team has bought into that. Fiji scheduled to play Georgia in Scotland at 12 a.m. on Sunday. Aquila Vama, FBC Sports. Day two of the Fiji Betaway Ricky Sevens has produced uh, some exciting rugby that's impressed National Sevens coach Gareth Beba. This is the first uh, time Beba is scouting for talent at the tournament, and organizers say his presence has somewhat elevated the level of competition in Taviuni today. Eleanor Turangiviu has more. The people of Taviuni today witnessed some exhilarating rugby with current national reps and members of the National Sevens training squad displaying their skills at the 13th Fiji Beta Wairiki Sevens. I've been pleased with you know, things I have seen from certainly from the reps themselves and the, the, tra the wider training squad. Present to witness and assess their performance is National Sevens coach Gareth Baber who flew into Taviuni today. And one of the biggest things that obviously I, I look for in here is who's got the work ethic and you know there's not a you know you're not standing in the middle of Hong Kong at the moment you're in Wariki and you've got to do exactly the same thing and that's what I'm looking for. The Ramsami Ami Green side boasts the services of reps Josuwa Kurnambili, Alusio Nandoba and brothers Sevuloni Modenadangi, Iso Tambo and Kabiki Nitambo. The Blue Guest Police Blue have the likes of Kalyani Nasoko, Waisi Nadungu, Apinisa the Kambalavo and Levi Ikanikonda. Captain by Jerry Twai, the FDS Barbarian side has the likes of Chuta Wainingolo, Taniela Sandrungo and former Sevens rep Pio Twai. I have, I have my, my view on what my team looks like and I'm looking for players that do that. I know that there's you wouldn't be a rugby player and playing at this level if you didn't think you could get to that. And that's what I want. I want ambitious people who dream of being in the Fijian team. This is the first time Beba is scouting for talents at the Fiji Beta Wairiki Sevens and his presence has boosted the performance of local rugby teams. I think from judging from the games yesterday and today, the, the players kind of lifted their game to try and uh, impress the coach. To... The under 20 category, netball and men's and women's volleyball have also started with games being held at the Weyevo and Weiriki grounds. Eleanor Turangaiviu, FBC Sports. Police uh, district football reps will not get special treatment ahead of the Sukuna Bowl. This has been uh, made clear by Police Acting Deputy Commissioner Itendra Naya as they narrowed down the names for their matchday squad against the Army. Tali Matera Kula reports. Their star status as district reps will not guarantee their place in the final selection. I think it uh, boils down to the fact to who has committed more in the training. So it's not the names, it's, it's the training, the dedication, the commitment. We also look at the loyalty of the players. So. Naya says they will need to feel the best players to take on the well-disciplined army side. We respect uh, the military team, our brothers from the military, and uh, they always come out uh, firing and prepared. 
and we look forward for a, a wonderful uh, game. Wary of the Indalainambua base team, police will need to be on their best to defend their title. Yes, uh, it will be hard uh, defending a uh, champion. Defending uh, is uh, always hard and uh, military is an uh, equally good team. They will be coming up uh, firing in this uh, Skuna Bowl. I think uh, the boys are prepared very well, even though just uh, we'll finish off with the Fiji Fek and then move on to the Skuna Bowl. I think uh, there's no excuse being with all the uh, majority of the district players, national players who have represented our country and they're playing for the police team. And I think uh, the prepared is going very well. And coming on Wednesday, we'll see how things go. Last year's 3-1 win is history for the police as they prepare for another epic clash against Ami on Wednesday at Albert Park in Suva. Tale Matairkula, FBC Sports. The easy cool uh, Nandi football team is still wary of the Food City Ash Cuts uh, and Style sponsored Rewa side despite a 1 0 lead in their Fiji Fact semi final. With the game to resume from the second half at Sabrell Park on Saturday, Nandi coach Kamal Swami says they can't afford to be complacent against the Delta Tigers. Philippe Naikaso has more. The Jet Setters are fully aware that they are not in a comfortable position ahead of the semi-finals this weekend. We need to maintain that uh, one goal uh, scoreline and um, it, it is tough. It will be tough, I know. Reva will be coming firing, so we need to prepare for that and that is what we are doing. The break has also given Nandi a chance to work on a few issues which lacked in the first half in Lambasa last weekend. Are you looking at the... Uh, game last week, uh, like in the first uh, half, eh? we are playing, uh, Shiro is a very good team, uh, it's not going to be easy, the, like you're going to play second half. Eh? With one foot already in the final spot, coach Swami is making no promises, however stressing the team will give their best. We try our best to maintain this win and uh, qualify for the finals and uh, uh, we are uh, requesting them to pray for the team and uh, always support the team so that can, we can do well. Rewa and Nandi will play on Saturday at 11.45 a.m. The final will be played on Sunday at 1 p.m. Philip and Icaso, FBC Sports. Netball Fiji will draft some players from the Fiji Pearls extended squad to join the Northern Rays team in next year's Heart Sapphire Series in Australia. After naming its extended squad last month, the Pearls have taken a break for a few weeks before they head into camp later this month. Netball Fiji Secretary Lucy Rokura says they're working on selecting a national coach before the team marches into camp. In the meantime, Rokura says their main focus is getting players ready to feature in the Sapphire Series. We are hoping to regroup them again this, this uh, December uh, for a training camp uh, because we now have an opportunity for... Uh, six to eight of our players uh, being uh, uh, drafted into the Northern Rays uh, team that will play in the, the Safai Series in, uh, in Australia uh, next year. The Super Bowling Club will host the Masters Pairs Tournament for the first time this weekend. Top bowlers from around the country are expected to take the greens once again with the likes of Nandi Bowling Do, Ravinesh Prasad and Kushal Pillay, Simesa Naiseruvati and others. Carlene Tavi has more. The annual tournament is normally held at the Vatukolo Bowling Club, but due to the current pandemic, Suva Bowling Club is the new host. Well, the, the decision came about when Bowls Fiji sent out notice to all the clubs. If any of the clubs wish to host the Master Base, so Suva Bowling Club, through our committee, our games committee, put up their hands and uh, we were given the chance to host this uh, masterpiece this weekend. Cakes 2000 has also stepped in to assist the competition by rolling in $1,000 for the two-day meet. Uh, and the new management of uh, the bowling club. Um, the bowling club has uh, recently over the past couple of years um, come up and uh, developed and the more emphasis um, and the standards have grown. And uh, this is uh, one of the reasons why Cakes 2000 has become involved um, to support this wonderful sport. This competition is also laying the platform for the young and seasoned bowlers to dominate the greens. So 
So only the top bowlers in Fiji will be playing this weekend and playing pairs. And also I'd like to thank our sponsor. Without the sponsors nowadays, sports like uh, bowls, which is a minor sport, hardly can uh, host this kind of event. Around 32 players will be competing at the Suva Bowling Club. Karlini Tavi, FBC Sports. India ended their one-day series in Australia on a high as they claimed a 13-run win in Canberra. And despite losing the series 2-1 in the final match, Ravindra Jadeja found his groove smashing 39 runs off his final 13 balls. The finish unbeaten on a 66 not out of 50 balls. That's it from Sports Tonight in New Media. Facebook's Independent Oversight Board announces first cases. Listen more coming up. Radio Fiji 2, Desh ki dhadka. And Venina joins us now with today's weather. Good evening, let's take a look at the weather. There were mixed conditions around the country today. In the west, it was a sunny morning with increasing afternoon cloudiness. Eastwards from Peck Harbour to Silva, early morning showers were followed by a cloudy afternoon. And up north, generally sunny. At seas, moderate east to southeast winds, fresh at times, moderate to rough seas. For the tides, low tide at 3.59 tomorrow morning with sunrise at 6.21 a.m. Tomorrow may bring some good news for the west because it appears a low-pressure trough will bring them some showers during the day. And for temperatures, we will again have temps hitting the 30s. Looking at making plans for Saturday, there will be occasional showers and a few thunderstorms over most places. That's all the weather for now. Have a great evening and it's back to Edwin. And Fijian Pulse, we asked, how else can we address the stigma associated with HIV AIDS? Most of these things should be teached in the school, how to prevent from HIV. So that's the, uh, and uh, like in the public too, eh? public should be addressed. People, those who have AIDS, the best thing is they should be vocal. I think there should be more awareness in education and uh, telling the people how to prevent it. The more awareness and open conversations we have surrounding HIV and AIDS, the easier it is to address the stigmatizations of victims. Singapore has given the U.S. startup company Just Eat the green light to sell its lab-grown chicken meat. The firm says it's the world's first regulatory approval for so-called clean meat that does not come from slaughtered animals. More in the world of the weird and the wonderful. And recapping the main stories, MPs appear in court over charges, more drama in Kishore Kumar case, and we need to heal oceans, says Prime Minister. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question, this week we are asking, should William Ngavoka be given the position of opposition leader? Visit our FBC News website to answer. And to our shot of the day, Salim Gohil took this at Suva's famous Albert Park. You can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fpcnews at fpc.com.fj or share it uh, with us via our FPC page, FPC News. You can also follow and tweet at FPC News or hashtag FPC News. And that is your news for this evening. Until tomorrow, Modemanda. Marsani Naika, Bumbo Lugu Latoka, Radio Fiji 2 Me, Purana Gana Lage, Ame Bota Chalage. Radio Fiji 2, Teshki Dharkan.